That's awesome. Well, hey, everybody. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, we're both smiling. All right, here we go. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Kevin Snyder, and I'm here with... Mike Mooney. How are you? What's up, Mike? What's going on, buddy? Well, hey, man, um, for the folks watching this, we have no clue who might be watching this or why, but no. you know, Mike and I, we're connected through the National Speakers Association, and I saw Mike presenting recently, and I thought, I love the fact that this guy has upped his game by meaning <laughs> his his switcher game and his studio. Um, I, you know, same thing with myself. It has been a journey. I'm so glad I pushed myself. But my, Mike and I wanted to kind of take an opportunity just to kind of showcase it a little bit, answer questions about it, and hopefully push people to realize how important this is for for professional speakers, trainers, teachers, even people that just want to take it to the next level, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think as you're looking at, at speakers in different places, you have to really understand, like, what is it you're still bringing to the game? What are you doing with your game? Right? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. So Mike, tell us, um, I mean, what was it like for you? Were you a tech person, you know, going like pre pandemic? Um, <laughs> you look like you're a tech person. So yes. like, were you a tech person though? Kevin, absolutely. I used my, my four-year degree in computer science and engineering to put all this together by my own hands. I actually made, made this microphone out of foam, uh, rubber bands and uh, some chewing gum. Jeez. Well, yeah. so no, I, dude, I'm, I'm totally messing with you. Clearly. Um, uh, I was not, I was not computer or, or I was computer savvy, but not like the tech savvy part of this. So when, when, you know, uh, Corona came in and totally like flipped our world as speakers upside down. I mean, I don't know about you, but, but March of, of, um, 2020, I had 25 keynotes lined up for Q1, two and the three, and felt like I was just going to be rocking my year. And within a two week period, they all went bye bye you know, and, and as a speaker and, and that, that being your, your primary being up on stage, right? It was your primary way of connecting with people. It took me like, probably took me like four months to figure out how do I, and what do I do to, to still bring that level of game and try to keep that engagement going in yeah. with, with technology, quite honestly. And it was a real challenge at first, a real challenge. So you, so you weren't a tech person. I mean, you maybe had some little computer savvy, but setting up a studio with camera oh, no. pictures, like, like that no. made it sound like, yeah. No, 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 no. And, and in fact, for a little while, man, it, to, to be completely honest with you, I use that as my excuse for why I wasn't going to move forward and try to try to push things along. It was my wife at one point who said, don't you talk about this idea that nothing grows in the comfort zone? I'm like, hmm. Okay, thank you for bringing <laughs> that and putting it right in my face. But yeah, you know, and that kind of pushed me to say, look, you know, I've got to step out and step up and, and learn some things. Right. I mean, were you in the same boat? I mean, I don't know about your gear and your setup in the beginning. Oh, yeah. So, what, yeah, what I like, too, about us is we're, we kind of have some things that are similar, but some things are also that are, that are different based on what I call personal preference. Like, yeah. you're sitting. That's awesome. I'm standing. You know, I kind of like, you know. <laughs> um, but show us real quick your camera angles that you've got. Yeah. And, and we'll so, talk about this in a moment, how, to, how we're actually doing this, folks who are watching absolutely. this, but show us your angles. So, so this, is, this is what I call my camera three, quite honestly. So this, is, this is my wide yeah. shot, which allows me to, you know, showcase um, my, my backdrop. So you can see this isn't green screen. This is, you know, legit stuff <laughs> back here, real helmets, real steering wheels and, and, and things like that. But that, that speaks to my DNA from my professional life of 25 years in motorsports and NASCAR, IndyCar, Formula One, and drag racing, where I worked with championship level drivers and teams. And, and that, those stories are the backdrop to the lessons that I share on stage and right. virtually here. So I like having this wide angle because it allows me the opportunity to kind of showcase a little bit of that and right. not be really in your face, but it's there. And then you know, I've got my uh, my 43 inch screen TV off to the side here, which allows me to, you know, again, just kind of showcase a slide or two if, if I want to go there. Um, and, or, you know, what's really cool about that is I can flip the slide and then also 
be able to then put it, which is my second camera angle, uh, which allows that that slide to then be there on screen. But with picture in picture with the A10 Mini Pro allows yeah. me to kind of still be engaged. You know, that was one of the things that I, I didn't like early on um, with this, you know, was, was that when you did have to put a slide up there, they lose you, you know, right. and now the, I think that's where the can you see my slides? Can, it, can everybody see that? Can, you know, and it takes like five oh, yeah. seconds and yeah. you and I are doing it just with the click of a button. Right. Right. Okay. And I can go through and I can be talking, you know, through all of these points, you know, as, as we're going along. So, you know, it's it's a it's a matter of, of trying to I'm not saying replicate what we did um, on stage, but but there is an element where you've got to you got to, you know, bring that level as best you can. So what if people and feel free to ask me questions here, too. I don't want to hog your time. Um, <laughs> But what, what have people noticed about you, like when people see this, right? Because most speakers, I'm still, and by speakers, I mean people that present, like coaches present, trainers yeah. present, um, you know, not just professional speakers, like you and I are, we do keynotes, we do workshops, but there's a lot of people that rely on this virtual delivery now. Yeah. And no disrespect to them, but a lot of people aren't doing what you and I would recommend that they do, right? They're kind of like waiting for something to come back to normal. Well, I mean, you know, that's and, and what's happen. that going to be? What, what, what is that normal going to be? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So when, when people do see you, what's yeah. that immediate reaction that they, that they get when you go in between camera angles or even do what you just did there? Yeah. So uh, let, let me take a step back on that because the, my, my why behind it, I think is important from where I was sitting and where this was coming from. And um, I hope this doesn't come across the wrong way, but like, when you go up on stage and you're going to be commanding the attention of a 500 person room, a thousand, 2000, whatever that group is, it could be 30, right? I believe part of that responsibility is to actually stand up and stand out. And in so doing, it actually changes the perception of how people see you, the way you dress and how you walk and talk and all those things being authentic to you. I'm not talking about, you know, being disingenuous, but I believe that in order to be seen as we want to be seen as thought leaders, inspirers, catalysts, that we need to be able to stand out. And yeah. I thought to myself, as I was doing these sessions or Zoom sessions with my regular t my regular camera, I'm like, I look like everybody else here. Like my view, what people see, it looks like what everyone else is seeing. So if I really believe in trying to stand out and stand up in an authentic way, I, I've got to then step up my game here. And I'll tell you, it has done amazing things for me. So when when uh, I have a, a conversation with a prospect, you know, or someone who, who's interested in me coming in talking with their teams, I'll have this set up and I'll go through and I'll have their logo up on on the on my my screen and and will so it allows me to customize that part of the conversation, right. and that there in itself they go, whoa. Dude, you invested in all that. I absolutely invested in all this because I'm, I'm, I'm a professional speaker. This is what I do. And more importantly, this is the level that you're going to get, that your team is going to experience. So I just found that for me, it was, it was a game changer. It was a differentiator in an authentic way. And it also helped really go back when you talk about fees, when people say, oh, how, how much is the investment? Oh, well, it's this. Oh, well, yeah, clearly you've got all this equipment here. You know what you're doing. Right. You know? So I, I don't know if I went too far down the rabbit hole on that one, but but I, I really, you know, the feedback's been absolutely over the top um, because it's different and it looks great. These 4K cameras are absolutely amazing, um, you know, and, and I really think it just helps us as speakers raise the bar a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's. I mean, you're, you're set up, man. You, you know, you've got you've got even to the GoPro, right? I mean, you've got the fisheye lens over there and you've got some yeah. other angles. You got a keyboard. I mean, yeah, come on. I mean, I think that's the other thing. Tell us about how much space you have there, because I think it's another challenge that speakers have when they think about this is like, how much room do you have? You know, you've got a whole wing of a house, it looks like. <laughs> um, actually, no, I have a white wall that used to have a couch and a TV above it that the wife kicked me out of the other room to say, all right, you need to get your little studio set up. You're, <laughs> you're annoying. Um, and what I did, I just went to home Depot. Yeah. Com and got my ship lap and never put ship lap up on a wall. But I, I for me, I wanted something that kind of looked rustic 
like you, I did not want to go green screen. Yep. If I talk about authenticity, I wanted to bring authenticity. Um, no disrespect to green, green screeners, but no. I mean, a no. virtual background, I think, is kind of, you know, if you can, anyway, we'll leave that, whatever. But um, <laughs> this, and, and so right here, these, these are basically panels on, on, a, on lattice that I also got at Home Depot. Phenomenal, man. So it's all removable. So, so, so when the time comes, you want to, you want to break it down and take the set on the road. You, you can just collapse. Absolutely. It in fact, I, I don't want to move because I'm, I'm, I'm going to spoil something in a, in a few minutes. I want to get your reaction. All right. Because I'm wearing my Zoom pants. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you party? I'm not going to say party. And, or, yeah, yeah. Or do you want to see my Zoom pants now? Well, dude, you already let it out of the bag, so to speak. Yeah. All right, let me just show you my Zoom pants. So, anyway, oh my <laughs> and my and my my bunny flippers. So, and you, you know, people say, "Oh, you're giving me like, look, I'm just doing this for fun. I would never do this in like a presentation." But I want to show you how I can move these boards. And guess what? This is right here. That's our laundry room. Oh my god! So that's the hallway to our bedroom and the kids' room. And this board here, hopefully, yeah, makes it look like. That's phenomenal. Only problem is I got to angle it slightly. Just, yeah. Just to make sure that nobody comes in and knocks it off. Correct. You put a, you put a sock on the, on, the other, on the door handle on the other <laughs> side to let people know don't come in here. Yeah, from the sock on the, the, sock on the doorknob, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it, am I the only one whose whose roommate did that? Where, where did you go to college, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Elon wants me to promote. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, oh, you know, I used to work at High Point, so I, I heard of that. Is that right? But that's so funny. Nah. That's, no, but you know, you know what's 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 cool is that okay. So you took um, a place in your house. You had a room that you then just sort of repurposed, which is great. And and you've got the space. I know I've seen your setup. Um, behind there where you've got amazing monitors. I mean, your, yours is like absolutely tricked out and, and phenomenal, you know? Well, and all this is, I feel like I need to change because nobody's taking me seriously right now. <laughs> um, but all this is a, is a, is a this was actually an, an old school TV. I just put on a standing monitor and it's yep. got an HDMI underneath that goes to my, goes to my laptop. Yep. Right I mean, here. At that, that, right, that shot right there is, is insane. Well, and anybody looking at this now, yeah, they're going to be like, oh man, Kevin is, he, he must work in the geek squad or, you know, like what I'm like, dude, I didn't even have a zoom account. Like I didn't even have a zoom account a year ago. And yeah. if I did, like I didn't use it. So when I, I, I learned, yeah, I got coaching. I paid somebody to help. I watched people like Stan Phelps who we're good friends with. Yeah. Um, and that's why I tell people, Hey, if you have questions, I mean, that's why you and I are taking our time, our, our valuable time in a way, respectfully. I mean, time's valuable to everybody, but mm -hmm. that's why we're putting this together is to help people and say, look, you know, if you doubt yourself, it will control you. And oh. if you're serious about your business and if presenting now virtually in any way needs to be your best impression, this is something that they need to consider because if they're sitting down in front of a bookshelf using screen share, I'm sorry, but 2018 called and they want their computer back. Right. I right. mean- Respectfully, <laughs> um, you know, when, when you look at the, the people that you're around, I mean, you mentioned Stan, when he showed me his, his studio one time, I literally said, I, I've got studio envy. How did you do that? You know, and, and I didn't know, like, at first, so, so this is another thing just to consider for people who were, who were, who were, who were considering this is that you, you don't have to go from zero to hero, you know, for me personally, I, I started with, with just getting some, these blue LED lights back here. That's all I did. I started with that and I, and I kept my on screen, my computer camera going, you know, I mean, that, that's what, that's what I, what I use. And then, then I stepped up and said, okay, well, look, you know, I probably should get, um, you know, my mic on here. Okay, cool. So now I got the mic, I'm not using my earbuds anymore. Now I can scale up, you know, so I just think that that people can look at this in a way that's scalable, not only for their budget, but also their their ability and their tolerance for, you know, trying to, to learn right. this. Because it look, there were nights and we were joking about this earlier where I'm sitting there with like two two like um, connector ends and going, what I, I what do I do with this? Oh, I got the wrong one again, you know, and and it's like, how many more, you know, things do I have to get? But I think that also speaks back to 
the beauty of today's age is that you don't have to carry the load all yourself. There are people out there that can help you if you're willing to invest your time. You got to think about where is your time and, and your resources best spent? Are you out there still building your business? Or can you carve off a little bit of that resource to hire a coach for a couple of hours like you and I both did to help us put some pieces together? Yeah. Absolutely. How much time did Kevin, I mean, to get to where you were, man, I mean, did you spend a lot of time trying to DIY it? Oh yeah. And, and people, you know, I'm in a mastermind group with a couple other speakers and I'm kind of the, they, they, you know, we all love each other. So I'll, I'll take their, uh, their, they call me the DIY guy, DIY everything. I'm like, no, I actually don't like, but there are some things you need to learn how to do. Right. And here's, here's one reason why I could have paid somebody probably 1500 to two grand to set all this up. And catch this, I wouldn't know how to troubleshoot. Right. So I made a decision because this is my business. And there was a point, and I do want to mention this to people, where I almost quit. I mm -hmm. mean, I was going to Home Depot for shiplap and garden supplies and all. And I almost decided, I, I'm just going to work at Home Depot until the pandemic. Am goes. I a landscaper or, or yeah. am I speaking? Right. Or I can speak I mean, to landscaping. And I'm not a tech person. And so much of my life, I can't tell you how many times in my life that I always felt behind the eight ball or I didn't feel like I was good enough. Mm -hmm. And I wrote a book called Think Differently where I should be the master in this, right? No, but I'm aware, I'm aware, like we all have self-doubt yeah. and anybody that will, will, will not admit that to themselves or to you, it, they're either lying to you or themselves. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, so mm -hmm. I just, I went through this all again last year. It was a real challenging, frustrating time. Yeah. And my wife was helpful. Like you mentioned, she basically said, Hey, you know, you just need to spend some time and just really ask yourself, is this a learning curve that you can learn? Or yeah. is this something that you just don't even want to do anymore? And why? Yeah. And, 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 and I shifted my thinking. And that's why I actually, in the midst of this, I said to myself, I'm going to trust the universe here. Mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of my own content. Mm -hmm. I have to walk my talk literally. And <laughs> if I were to put myself as an audience member in my own program, what yeah. would I tell myself? I love it. And that's where I developed literally this brand new keynote here called Becoming a Shift Thinker. And the first principle of it is how to develop a growth mindset. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And that helped me shift how I looked at everything. And now with my studio, yeah. what I love about it, and I'll, I'll shut up after this, but what I love about it is it allows me to do things virtually that I could not have done in person. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, bring, you know, the keyboard. So, you good know, and, 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 uh, you know, I know it might sound, oh, like you, you play piano in your speech. Yeah, there is a part of my speech where I play. Oh, no. There it is. There it is. Right? But no, I tie that into I my speech. Um, and, and blah, blah, blah. The point is, I'm able to do things I could not have done yeah. in person. And I, yeah. that's where my, my life and my, my, how I even feel about stuff just really changed. Mm -hmm. um, so what about you? I mean, how is virtually kind of, I mean, I know we're, we're still out of the weeds here. Um, you know, things aren't just like, Hey, I've got a virtual studio and now gigs are just flying or engagements are just flying my way. Yeah. But uh, I mean, do you feel good about how you've progressed and um, like knowing what you know now, like what, what tips maybe would you give somebody who maybe hasn't started doing this yet? Yeah. I, I would say this kind of gets back to the whole idea of start small. You know, start in a place where you feel like it's manageable and, it, and it's something that you can like get some small wins. I, I think, you know, I, I try to jump in and I'll, I'll be completely honest, like it was an investment. And I remember one day looking at the floor in my office and seeing all of these boxes and the equipment and the wires and all the things. And look, I'll, I'll be honest with you. They sat there on that floor for two months, man two months because I was so intimidated by the scale of all of this stuff. So I think if I had like started a little bit smaller and kind of like eased my way in or had someone say, Hey, start with some LEDs. Think about your background, you know, get something in there, like really kind of dress that up. Okay, cool. You got that. Great. Now, why don't you get your microphone? Now, why don't you get a camera, you know, and then Bill, I, I think that would have been probably easier for me, but I'm not that kind of guy. I just jump in. But when I jumped into that deep end, I really was looking around going, what the heck did I just do? And am I going to be able to recoup this investment right now? Which I, I can tell you that, you know, in, in the, the last few months, you know, since I've had this up and going, I have. It's already paid for itself four times. But 
um, getting there was was not always easy. And, and, and I'm with you with the self doubt, because there's that concern of, well, now I've got this hot rod, do I even know how to use it? Do I am I using it to its fullest potential? You know, um, and, and, you know, it takes practice. I mean, I'll tell you, like on my on my, um, my switcher over here, you know, I told you, I, I have the, the three angles that that we go between. And I even like I have like my little hack on this that on this, there's a button, there's like one, two, three buttons. And the middle one, I took some double sided tape that raises it up a little bit. So I got a little bit of braille going on here. So I don't have to really look, I just get my fingers on it. And I know, okay, great. Now I'm going to, you know, camera, you know, two that has the slide, and then I can go back over to one to get over here. So it's like you learn these little tricks. So you're not doing this. Right, right. Hey, Hey, you know, now it still happens sometimes, but you know, you, you learn as you go. That alone, I'm going to, I'm going to credit you, but I'm going to, I'm going to steal it because every now and then I have to, like right now people can't see, but I'm like feeling for my switcher. I'm like, okay, uh -huh. there it is. You know, and yep. if I accidentally hit the wall, you know, all right, there's number two. Yeah. That's a different camera, but you know, I like that sticky tape. <laughs> yeah, man, it's literally just double-sided tape and like it. you know. It, it just raises it up just enough that I can feel that difference, you know, and it's little things like that you figure out, you know, as as you go, um, you know, the, the other the other part of this, too, and, I, and we're talking about your studio because you've got space to stand up and get around. I would love to do that, man. And I actually when I when Stan showed me his again, I was jealous and part of it was like, oh, well, if I can't have a space to stand up, then why am I even doing this? It's just kind of a waste. But I had to look at it for how it was going to fit my space and what I have. And this is literally like my office desk. So when I'm done, I push the mic back, you know, the things kind of stay where they are. Um, but I'm up on the edge of my seat, you know, I'm, I'm not sitting back in it, you know, I'm up here so I can still get my arms going because I like to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of I'm Italian. So I, I do speak with my hands. Uh, yeah, so I think when you look at your space, you have to think of like, how can I best use the technology to help me as a speaker stand up and stand out and, and present in a way that's going to get buyers attention, quite honestly, you know, what do you think about being an early adopter on this versus like, you think people are waiting? Do you get that sense? Some people are still waiting to see like, should we do it? Should we not? Is oh, it going to matter? I'm thinking that somebody, um, I mean, not, not a week goes by where I don't, because I'm involved with the Speaking Profession Toastmasters group. You and I are involved yep. with the NSA. We have a lot of um, newer members, but also some seasoned members who, I mean, I'm kind of getting off topic here, but if someone's watching this and they've been, they've been speaking for a while and haven't really adopted or evolved or shifted yep. into this new virtual world, they're probably already looking back and saying, eh. Because I'll say this, Mike, I'll, I'll just speak for me. Every single engagement I have this year yeah. and the ones I had last year mm -hmm. are virtual and it's because of this studio. Without a doubt. This shows I know what I'm doing. Yep. Right? Yep. My content is positioned and, and current and relevant in, in the world that we live in, but yep. how I deliver it is even more relevant. 100%. And and I think that's where a lot of people, regardless of where they're at, you know, I, I, a quote that I share with folks, it does not matter where you're at. It matters where you want to be. Mm -hmm. We all put our pants on the same way in the morning. We all have the same limited amount of time every day. Um, yeah. So if, if somebody's, whether they're just getting new or they're new into speaking, training, teaching, I mean, or, or they, they're a hall of fame speaker. Yeah. If, 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 if they're not asking themselves, how do I grow every mm -hmm. single day? they're not growing. Well, that, that it's and, funny you say that because that's actually one of the, the talks that, that, that I give is around this idea of stop giving 100% effort. It's crap. Stop with the 100% <laughs> effort. Just focus on 1% daily improvement, right? What's that 1%, you know? And, and I, I tell the story because of my days in, in racing of, of uh, there was a driver crew chief uh, duo, Jeff Gordon and Ray Evernham, and they dominated the 90s uh, in, in NASCAR, absolutely dominated it. And Ray Evernham's approach was always challenging his team to find the 1% of improvement, 
All right, let's break this car, this vehicle down to find the 1%. And one of them was this idea, and this is another great part of what these cameras can do, right? You talk about getting people's attention and being able to get them involved and close. This is called a hood pin. And this is the part of the car that holds the hood down while the car is racing, right? And traditionally, traditionally, this is how those hood pins were set up, all right, just horizontally. Well, Ray asked his guys, you know, what if we changed it and moved it to this position? Would that reduce our drag on the car? And sure enough, it did. And that 1% combined with five other, six, wow. 10, 15 other 1% led to them winning championships and, and, and races like you wouldn't believe and ended up in the Hall of Fame. So my point is this, you know, as speakers, let's think about the 1% that we can be gaining on every day. What's that, what's that gain? And if it's for you, it's, it's your content, perfect, that's great. If you feel your content's in a great spot, but your technology could use a boost, what's the 1% today? What is that one small thing today, right? It's like you tell the kids, right. how does the mouse eat the elephant? It's one bite at a time, right? <laughs> That, that's a great takeaway. I mean, gosh, we, we should probably just, if that, yeah, that's the, I think the main takeaway from all this is knowing that if you desire it, if you're passionate about it, um, let the passion drive you and then focus on what's my, the 1% yeah. that I'm going to focus on today or this week. So Mike, you're yeah. in, you're in Charlotte, right? Charlotte, North Carolina. I am. Yes. Yeah. So the town, okay. a little uh, North uh, Huntersville is the name of the town. It's a little bit North of oh, yeah. uh, Charlotte. Yep. So I'm in Raleigh. So we have that Carolina connection here. But um, and I didn't tell you I was going to do this, but I, so head, heads up. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the heads up. Man. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to hire you out right now. Anybody, if you are in the Charlotte, of course, we are in a virtual world, but, um, you know, if, if you're in that Charlotte, you know, North uh, what, Rock Hill or Columbia area, <laughs> reach out to Mike and uh, yeah. it sounds like Mike could probably help you out with some questions on your studio. Well, I'd be happy to do that. And I would, I would offer the same from you because you and I had some conversations early on too about, you know, how you were setting yours up and, and how it was going to look and working with Stan. I just really encourage you, especially if you're an NSA, if you're a member in the chapter, um, that you reach out to others in the chapter. I mean, this is all about the community that we're building as professional speakers. It's difficult. The work that we do is difficult because a lot of it, we're spending, refining it by ourselves, you know, and, and I'm a big believer that it's tough to read the label when you're inside the jar. So, so having somebody who can be that outside source of, of inspiration, thought, or even guidance, I think is invaluable. So, you know, I, I think for us here, and the purpose of not only just having a good time to get together and, and be able to talk is maybe to encourage you as a speaker that might be like on the fence or thinking that, hey, it's for somebody else, it's not for me. Trust me, when, when I started, I believed it was for someone else not for me until I stopped believing that and said, no, you know what? I'm worth that, right? What the message I want to deliver is worth that. So I'm going to invest my time and my resources to, to bring it to life. Preach it. I love it. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to touch that screen. Heal now. Hey, you anointed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are healed. Oh, snake. Oh, geez. Um, I love it. Hey, let's do this. Um, okay. I know, you know, there's a lot more we could talk about. So this might be part one of 10. I don't know. Uh, but let's, let's close it here and just, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch with everybody. Folks, if, if here's my contact information, Mike, why don't you put yours up too? Or oh, no. what's, your, what's your website? I've got to go. I got to get to my, my, my slide on my website. It's really simple. It's Mike Mooney.com. Mike Mooney.com. If you want to email me, it's Mike at Mike Mooney. Dot com. You're picking up on that that branding thread there. It's, it's <laughs> pretty easy. That's a cool name. Where'd you get it? Uh, you know, um, my, my parents, you know. That's awesome. I picked it up. Picked it up there. Yeah. No, this is great, man. Look, if this helps just one person, it's, it's worth it. If it helps 10 people, phenomenal. Uh, just try to keep moving forward. What's that 1% every day? Think of that hood pin. Think of what you can be doing, who you can be reaching out to to be a resource. This isn't out of your reach. It's not out of your reach. It's just a matter of how far do you want to elevate and take your game. That's right. And it could be watched in the millions. Millions. Right? <laughs> or what's that the 80s called? They want their movie back? Or, yeah. <laughs> oh, Austin come on Powers. now. No, it, 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 people always love the Austin Powers. Are you kidding me? Come on. 
Cool. Well, hey, Mike, thanks, buddy. And hey, folks watching. Eddie, thank you, man. Thank you for bringing it. I appreciate that. Appreciate what you're doing. Thank you for helping me, inspiring me. Hey, and, and can I just tell you, don't stop believing, baby. Don't, don't stop, stop believing. Take us out. Take us out. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take you out. Here we go. Oh, that's great. That's oh, great. I didn't even have the right camera angle on for that. Oh, well. Oh, well. Next time. Next, next episode. Time. I'll, I'll edit that out. <laughs> All right, Love guys. It. Take care. Cheers.